So here we are then, three years with my F56 Mini JCW. It's been a great car, it really has. I mean, as many of you might know, this has been my daily driver actually for the last three years. So it's had quite a bit of use, not compared to a lot of the cars out there with tens of thousands of miles on. I don't need to do that much commuting, but yeah, it's fair to say it's been used most days. So I suppose what we should really look at with this car is how the hot hatch market has actually changed. Actually, since this car was released back in 2015, now we're seeing more and more of these sort of super hatches like the A45S that we've got now, obviously the RS3, and these cars are pushing 400 horsepower and it's not uncommon for a hot hatch these days to have over 300 horsepower, which is quite, you know, that's a huge amount of power really. And this little Mini, only 230. Now I say only 230, this is still quite a bit of power because of course this car only weighs about 1280 kilos, which is pretty light by today's standards. There's, uh, there's no denying that. Of course as well, this has been pushed through the front wheels, something that we're seeing less and less of now as more and more of these hot hatches move to all wheel drive and four wheel drive systems. And we've got that good old six speed manual gearbox. Now for me, this, is really what a hot hatch should all be about. We've got a reasonably small engine, fairly lightweight, six speed manual, front wheel drive. That is for me what the hot hatch recipe should be. So yeah, it's fair to say this thing certainly meets what I want from the car and uh, it just performs so well. The engine in this is that two litre B48, which we see everywhere now. Uh, it's got a twin scroll single turbo on it. And as I mentioned, it pushes out 231 horsepower and 236 foot-pounds of torque, which is quite a bit, actually. My sort of one gripe, I suppose, with this engine is it's, it's a little bit asthmatic at the top end. It's got a huge amount of torque between about 2,000 and probably about 5,000 RPM, actually. But there's not really much point in revving it past 5,000. The red line is about 6,500. And don't get me wrong, it, it does rev out there quite easily, but it's just not doing much. It's almost like revving for the sake of revving. There's not much power and torque at that, that high RPM. So yeah, for me, you get most from this engine, probably actually between two and four, but fives you kind of absolute limit really. Now the ride in this is, it's actually quite supple. It's, it's on the firm side, but it's not ridiculously firm. And that's why for me, it's made such a great daily driver. Those of you who live in Britain, who have driven on Britain's roads as well, you'll know that we really don't have very good roads over here and there's plenty of potholes. And to be honest, anything with a, a firm ride, it's just not gonna be pleasant to drive. You know, okay, maybe on a motorway or something like that, but day to day, it's gonna become quite unpleasant quite quickly. So. The Mini for me is just, it's a perfect suspension setup. It doesn't really roll much, so you can really push on on these nice B roads and really get the most out of the car. But then, you know, if you're commuting or you're driving down a pretty rough country road, it's not too bad at all. Overall, I think it's just such a good little package. You know, we've got quite a high build quality, really. And it is a premium product. It does feel quite nice, especially on the inside. It's quite a nice use of materials and it just feels well made. And of course, you would expect that with it being a BMW product. Now, when these came out as well back in 2015, they were really, really well priced. If I remember correctly, I think you could pick one of these up sort of back then for around 23 and a half thousand pounds, maybe a little bit more, which to me, God, it's just such a good package to have at that price point, And it does everything you want. Now, of course, classic BMW, there were plenty of options that people could add on and, you know, that did add a bit to the price, but, you know, it was, it was rare to see one of these kind of specced over about 30,000 pounds in the UK. Of course, we've got those mighty four piston Brembo brakes on the front, which are just ridiculously powerful for such a lightweight car. 
and uh, that's more than you can ever need. I've actually never tracked this car, but I still might, still might do that at some point. Um, but yeah, for road use, mighty powerful, all you could ever want. Never ever had them fade on me once. Um, so yeah, that, they're brilliant, brilliant brakes, they really are. As some of you might know who've been following the channel for a while, I also fitted Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's to this uh, last year in 2019, and that made a hell of a difference. Out of the box, although it handles pretty well from a suspension viewpoint, the, the tyres, they did lack a bit. They were a Pirelli run flat, and they just didn't, didn't perform as well sort of on the limit. The Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, however, just made a huge difference. It is it's so much better, especially all year round, actually, which is the interesting thing. A lot of people might think it's more of a performance oriented tyre. It, it's not gonna be particularly good in the wet, but it's, it's really fantastic. It just manages to pull traction from places you would never imagine, and that's the key thing here. And of course, as well, with it being a non-run flat tyre, um, it's, it's just made it ride quite a lot better again. So yeah, all around, that was one of my sort of best purchases, I think. And of course the running costs of this car really aren't too bad. I mean, like I said, I haven't done loads of miles in it, but I have used it every day pretty much. Uh, I'm trying to think the only services I've had, I had this sort of major service last year. That was uh, two years after I had it. A little bit expensive, but it was main dealer prices. So nothing to be sort of uh, surprised at there. And then earlier this year, I had the front brake pads done. And I think all in total, that total work cost me about 600 quid. So that's 600 quid over three years. It's really not too bad, is it? So yeah, overall, it really isn't too bad on running costs. And fuel is another thing. The MPG this thing can pull is pretty crazy. You can push on in this and quite easily get 25 to 30. And uh, if you're driven sort of long motorway journeys as well, 40 MPG is really pretty achievable. But of course, living with a car for three years, you're bound to find some things that just aren't as good as you'd hope. And uh, there are plenty on this Mini, trust me. First of all, my biggest gripe really has to be the interference of electronics on this car. And this isn't just a case of, oh, turn traction control off. It's more to do with overall how everything's set up. For example, the throttle mapping is probably one of the strangest I've ever actually experienced in a car. It feels very vague. It's almost like with your right foot, you sort of give a suggestion to the engine of what you would like, and then the ECU decides what it wants to do. So. Most of the time I drive this in mid modes, and that's the most linear throttle that you can get. But even that has sort of a weird thing, maybe to about 50% of the, the pedal travel, it doesn't give you anywhere near 50% of the power. But then in the final 50% of the throttle pedal travel, it gives you way more. So even that isn't a particularly linear throttle pedal, to be honest, and in sport, it kind of just tightens up even more. So the first 50% of throttle pedal travel gives you way more, and then green is just the opposite. So yeah, that, that, it's pretty annoying. And also what it quite often does in, if you're pulling off in first gear, it, the computer withholds torque essentially, and you've got to keep your foot pinned there and then it gives you everything at once. And so if you think about it, you're trying to pull off a junction sort of promptly and you're in first gear, you put your foot on the floor, it's not going to give you anywhere near full power. I think most of the time it tends to give you about half power, which is a bit stupid, but there we go. There's going to be cons, aren't there? The traction control itself does work pretty well. Um, and of course we've got torque vectoring by braking as well, which helps to transfer torque across that front axle and pull you out of corners. So that does work quite nicely too. But there's just a couple of things with the throttle pedal and just the overall engine mapping that I've found quite weird. Another thing is sometimes you'll come off, say a roundabout in third gear, you'll put your foot down and again, it'll withhold torque and you've got to wait a few seconds and then it gives you everything in one go. But what I must say is as you turn the traction control off, it does get much better to use. The other annoying thing is this gauge cluster. I'm just not a massive fan. I mean, the rev counter is tiny. And to me, I, I quite like to see what RPMs the engine are operating at. So that's a little bit annoying. The speedo is okay. You've got this little digital cluster at the bottom, which works pretty well as well. But yeah, it's kind of having like a double speedo. I, I don't know. I'd rather have a bigger rev counter, I think. The steering on this is also a little bit weird. I think that's partly caused by that torque vectoring by braking system. But yeah, it takes a little bit of getting used to and it's very, very artificial, especially if you put it into sport mode, it's just way too heavy. And yeah, it just doesn't feel very natural. I think as well, there's also a system that helps to prevent torque steer. And you can feel that actually, it's quite incredible how well that works because you put your foot down in second gear and it tracks perfectly straight. But obviously a downside of that is that it's gonna take away some of the steering feel and you, and you do notice that. 
but I think you can get just about enough feedback to really enjoy the car. Of course, as well, you've got that fantastic exhaust on these minis. It, it really does sound great. You could spec a pro exhaust back in the day uh, before all the EU emissions regulations got even stricter. Um, and that sounded quite ridiculous, actually. That was stupidly loud and some really loud pops and bangs. This is just the standard exhaust on here and you still do get some nice pops and bangs. And to be honest, comparing it to new cars today, that I saw, I've got these uh, OPF filters and things like that, this is so much louder and it, it really does show how much cars have changed in the last sort of three to five years. So yeah, that's one thing I never get bored of, it's just that amazing sound, it really does sound great. Of course, we've got BMW's active sound design, which is dubbed ASD. Basically, that's just the sound being piped through the speakers. It's pretty commonplace on new cars these days, unfortunately. But you know what? It sounds pretty realistic in here. It's not too bad. It's not like they've tried to overlay a six cylinder soundtrack over a four cylinder engine. So, what do I think then of the F56 Mini JCW? Well, it honestly has been a fantastic daily driver and if you are considering one of these cars i can't recommend it enough of course there are quite a few of these actually out on the used market now i do occasionally look just to see what's out there and yeah there's plenty of jcw's about i believe you can even still order these new from the factory as well i'm sure we will be seeing the fourth generation bmw mini soon uh, it's probably not too far away now and it'll be interesting to see what actually happens to that sort of lineup of models and also whether we'll get another JCW like this because I'm inclined to think that we won't. So anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I say, it's been a fantastic three years of this car and I've really enjoyed every minute of it. It's one of those cars that you always look forward to driving. Even though I'm in it, you know, most days, it's just, it's great to get out, especially if you get onto a B road and, you know, just really use the car for what it's made for. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.